Okay, I'd like to uh, start and talk about Midas Gold. I'm just going to give you some quick highlights. Um, thanks, Nick, for your introduction and comments. And um, uh, the presentation you have in your hands that Liz has handed out, if anybody needs one, stick up your hand. Uh, it's got more slides than I'm going to talk about here. It's got the full deck of slides about the company. And if you have any questions or you uh, want to come talk to us, after this we'll be at our booth, which is right at the far end, uh, number 803. Um, right at the back end over there. So feel free to come by and talk to us and we'll both be there. So I'm going to talk briefly about Midas Gold. I'm going to make forward-looking statements and I'm sure you've all read that multiple times. Um, this slide here is basically the, the highlights of the whole company on one page. So if you don't want to take the whole presentation, take that page out and that gives you the highlights of the whole company. So I'm going to talk briefly about Midas. Um, we're formed in 2011. We're on public. Um, spent about $140 million US on the project uh, to date. Uh, we've done over 100,000 meters of drilling. We've taken the project to pre-feasibility study. We're now working on feasibility and moving our way into, and we're in our permitting process for building a mine. Got a very strong shareholder base. Uh, you can see some of the big holders listed there. And then in March last year, we did a financing that was backstopped by Paulson & Co. Some of our large shareholders also participated in that. And so we're very well funded uh, to move the project forward, as I'm going to talk about in a minute. Talk briefly about the project. It's in Idaho, as Nick mentioned. It's basically in the center of Idaho, north-south, um, and uh, is a district that's produced about a million ounces of gold historically. Idaho is a very pro-mining, pro-resource uh, state. Uh, obviously, the, the Coeur d'Alene district in the north, a major silver mining district up there. Uh, less well known down in the southeast, you have a major phosphate mining district um, uh, with all the big players, Agri and Monsanto, etc., uh, operating down there. We're in the center, relatively close to the uh, Thompson Creek Molly mine that's currently under suspension, but is one of the biggest molly producers in the Western world, uh, but uh, currently suspended because of low molly prices. The project itself is, uh, comprises three deposits. They're all spread over about two kilometers or one and a half miles, so they're all one centralized mill. Uh, we have a 6.6 .6 million ounce total resource, of which 4.6 million ounces is reserve. These are very good grade deposits. The yellow pine deposit on the left, the average grade is two grams a ton. Round numbers, that's about four times the open pit grade that's typical in Nevada, the average open pit grade in Nevada. So these are very good grade deposits. Um, uh, Hangar Flats is about 1.5 grams, and West End's about 1.2 grams a ton. And you can see they're also sizable. Yellow Pine deposit by itself is two and a half million ounces of reserves at that two grams a ton. We did a pre-feasibility study, as I mentioned. It was completed in 2014. Uh, it basically benchmarks at 340,000 ounces of gold a year in the top left-hand side, 4 million ounces of payable gold, and uh, all in sustaining costs are about $616 an ounce uh, for the life of mine average. Uh, those numbers are higher or better in the early years, so we average about 390,000 ounces in the first four years and that pushes all in sustaining costs down to about $500 an ounce uh, in the f that first four year period. We have about a 20% rate of return and about an $800 million NPV on the project. And that's as it stands in the pre-feasibility study, but there are opportunities to add value. <clears throat> One additional thing we have is about 5% of the cash flow comes from antimony. Antimony is not very well known. It's basically dominantly produced in China about 90% uh, of the smelting capacity is there. Its primary use is as a flame retardant, and you can see in those photographs, uh, coveralls that have been treated with uh, flame retardant on the left and ones that aren't on the right. But it's much more widely used than just coveralls, the carpet in this uh, room here, the tablecloths, uh, insulation around the copper wire in the building, any, any type of plastic you don't want to burn, you add antimony to it uh, so that um, it uh, melts rather than burns. So a very important product and has a potentially very strong future developing as some significant Chinese production has been the dominant producer for about uh, 50 years, has essentially shut down as of last year, and so you're seeing prices starting to creep up relatively recently. So where do we offer value? Coming back to Nick's point is where is the opportunity for shareholders to make money? Uh, there's essentially three opportunities or three different ways uh, that we believe in that you could see all three of these developing as the company moves forward. 
one simply is we have a lot of gold in the ground. We have a project that's economic at current gold prices. As gold price goes up, you get more value. And you know, this shows three different ways of looking at leverage uh, to the upside of gold price. Obviously, we don't control that. The gold price will do what it will. However, what we do control is moving the project forward through the permitting process. And this chart on the bottom right looks at the value of companies as they progress through the permitting process. So we're sitting over here at about a 0.2 times our net asset value of the company. Companies that are either fully permitted or almost permitted or partially permitted are trading around uh, 0.4 to 0.5 times NAV. So that's two, two and a half times where we are today. Lundin Gold, which just started development, is trading at about 0.7 times NAV, so three and a half times where we are today. And obviously, you get to production. TMAC just started. Uh, you know, they're trading at 1.3 times NAV. So our aim is to go from here to here over the next couple of years, and then be here in about uh, two and a half, three years from where we are today, and obviously here after that. So there's leverage to moving through the development cycle, through permitting, into production. The other way is to add value to the project itself. So where's the upside opportunity there? We did a PA in 2012, a PFS in 2014. Um, these things we really can't control. We, you know, metal prices are low. We sold uh, royalty to Franco, that's gone. But there's about $450 million of value that we can control. This is primarily related to taking the inferred out of the, the mine plan. So there were uh, 5.5 million ounces in this mine plan here. But of that, a million ounces was uh, inferred, so there's only 4.6 million ounces in this mine plan. Well, the obvious answer is we'll convert it from inferred to indicated, upgrade the standards, and you can get into the mine plan and bring a big chunk of this value back into the project. So we've been drilling, as I'll talk about in a moment, to do that. This was basically metallurgical. We put out a press release in March, which basically says we've got all of this value back. So our aim is to try and add that 450 million in NPV back into the project by the time we get our feasibility finished. I mentioned the drilling. These are some of the results. I'm not going to get into the details. Happy to talk about them later. This was inferred to indicate a conversion. In this area, we got two to three times the expected grade down here. Inferred to indicate a conversion, we got one and a half to two times the expected grade. And in the center, you see some of these spectacular intercepts, you know, 220 meters starting at surface with a three gram grade. You know, these are really impressive uh, grade intercepts and really demonstrate the scale of this project. Uh, you know, very substantial mineral resource. One of the key factors people ask about permitting in the US, et cetera, uh, this project is a brownfield site. It was extensively mined for over 100 years. There was a smelter on site uh, sitting here, town site, et cetera. And it's left a substantial legacy of disturbance that has not been reclaimed. And the poster child is this site right here. This is the east fork of the south fork of the Salmon River. What does salmon tell you? Well, there used to be salmon going up here. There haven't been any salmon since 1938, and we're going to get those back uh, by uh, rebuilding this drainage and allowing salmon to get back upstream for the first time since the 1930s. And that's just illustrative of a number of challenges the project has. Talking briefly about the permitting process, this is the outline of the permitting process. The regulators have announced the intent to have a final decision in Q1 2019. Uh, so we're right here now. We're about to go into the scoping, which is the public comment period. And one thing you can do about US permitting is it's not a black box where you go in at the beginning and sometime in the future you come out at the end. All of these steps are publicly announced. You can go on to their site or our site. You can find out where we are. You can measure the progress, and you can see if we're going to make that time frame. And so we're announcing each of these steps, and we'll, you'll continue to these, see those steps and be able to measure the progress moving forward. So moving forward, you know, the regulatory process is underway. We filed our permits back in September. We're now moving forward with the, the, the formal process. We have an administration that's definitely interested in seeing jobs created, but you've got that huge environmental uh, reclamation opportunity added onto it, which provides a much broader interest in the project. The feasibility study underway, we've announced a series of results already that are going to contribute to that, and we'll have a study uh, completed in Q3 next year. And we have financing with over 30 million US in the bank 
uh, that should be able to take us all the way through the permitting and feasibility standards. So that's a really quick highlight to the company. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. As I mentioned, we're back at the far uh, back corner there, uh, booth 803, if you'd like to come by and find out more information. Thank you very much.